Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, your host, and today we are sitting down with, and I want to get this right because her CV is amazing, musician, activist, podcast host, inspirational influencer, and now entrepreneur, because we got to add that because it, she just started a new business during the COVID-19 because everyone else was worried about COVID-19. She's starting a business, but Crystal McGrath, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, Crystal, we're going to talk about your music first off, and I, I start all my interviews off with the same question for with musicians. Where does your musical style come from? I think it's just a blend of all my different influences throughout the years. I listen to every single genre of music. I love all music, and I think we can take something from every single genre on some level. I mean, like even metal music, I'm not a metal singer, but there's so much skill vocally in metal music. And it's cool to, to be able to pull from different different areas, but mainly vocally, I would say, you know, Christina Aguilera meets Kelly Clarkson meets Carrie Underwood is kind of where my country pop sound comes from. Was music a big influence in your life growing up? Because uh, you're in Calgary, I'm in Calgary and Calgary is sort of a, a music hotbed of uh, Canada, but was it a influence in your life or did it come to you later on in your life? Yeah, I know music was always a big part of my life. My, my family all loves music and, and listens to music all the time. I remember, you know, my dad would always bring home these giant laser disc and of like live concerts and we'd watch them in the basement and just music was something that always made me feel connection and just allowed me to be you know, free and feel all the feels. And so I just, yeah, no, it's been something that's been a part of my life since I was young. Now, having that background with your father of listening to those live music concerts in the basement and being a musician now, you, that's a far distance from being in the basement, listening to those concerts and releasing new songs. Uh, the one that we're going to be talking about, about a boy, but how did that journey progress? Because you don't just wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to release a song. It, it's a natural progression of writing music and then performing music and then actually releasing a song. So what was your progression like? Yeah. So when I was a kid, I was a competitive gymnast and it was my goal to go to the Olympics. So I was training every single day of the week. And that was just, my eyes were set on Olympics and gymnastics and then I ended up breaking both my feet at the same time and all, all sorts of other wonky injuries. And as a kid, you know, you can only push yourself. Well, I mean, at any age, you can only push yourself so hard, but I um, ended up turning to singing because I could no longer do gym. My body just wasn't, you know, as a 12 year old kid beat up like that. I just couldn't continue and be, able, you know, take care of myself. So I started singing. My dad got me, my dad was a big influence in, in music and, and really pushing me into the the music scene and I, I always loved singing so I joined the youth singers of Calgary and did you know the singing dancing acting type thing and we got to travel all over the place and I just thought oh how cool would this be to you know travel around the world and do music for the rest of my life and that's really kind of what got me started in music I was super shy back then and didn't want to use my voice for anything I didn't want anyone to hear me singing by myself I was very, very um, uncomfortable being who I was as a kid. And it's so interesting because now my main message in life is just to inspire people to be the best version of themselves. And I think that comes a lot from my childhood experience of not feeling good enough. But through that process, I worked with vocal coaches and really broke the shell on the outside of my, you know, my hiding of who I was. And that kind of just led me into songwriting, playing guitar, I taught myself and writing music as an outlet to let go of emotions. I recorded my very first demo um, of songs that I wrote probably when I was about 16 here in Calgary. And then I traveled to Australia and I came back, recorded a record in Vancouver. And from that point, I went to Atlanta and was a spokesperson for Toys for Tots down there. And they used my song Christmas Every Day as their inspirational campaign song for that season. And so I stayed down there for a while and then and then came home and I've just been, you know, making music ever since. 
So the great thing about my sh- the the one thing I like to do on my show is I, I I don't come in with a set of questions because I don't I want to listen to you and I want to feed off of what you're saying and then we can have a discussion because at the end of the day I want my show to be more of a conversation than a typical mainstream media of me back and forth with you on questions that I've written and I, I want to talk yeah. about one thing that you just stated was. You, you said that you you thought to yourself you weren't good enough to get on stage and play music. At what point of time in your career, in your life, did you say, you know what, I need to get that out of my head. I need to start thinking that I am good enough because people seem to like my music. People are enjoying what I'm putting out there. What was that moment for you? I think it's been an ongoing battle, quite honestly. I really? Think, you know, that feeling it just sits inside you. And, you know, I talk to musicians all the time and everybody feels this at some point. And, and I don't know if the feeling completely goes away. I think it's still, you know, belief systems, they get stuck in your mind. And, and when you're quiet and you slow down and you feel fear or stress, all of a sudden those little voices can come back up. So for me, it's just really finding that switch on how do I turn that voice? That's not real off. Like, it's just a thought. It's not, who I am. It does not define me. Um, A real pivotal moment for me though, was I was in Atlanta and I, you know, put out an album and I was doing music and I was performing at Fox theater, which is this huge theater, iconic theater in in Georgia. And I was in the dressing room, so nervous to go on stage. It was just me and my guitar. And I just had this moment where I'm like, you can either go out there scared or you can go out there loving what you do. And it was just like a light switch. I was like, nerves and excitement are the same feeling. And I always like to talk about this because your body, your physical reaction to nervousness and to excitement is the same thing, but it's your mental mindset that allows you to feel the different emotions. So even if you're shaking and jittery and feel like, ah, you can be excited and you can be nervous, but you get to choose what emotion you want to experience. So it was a really just profound moment for me to be like, it's just a switch, flip on the excitement. Why are you doing this? Because I love it. And that's all that matters. And it was just this really clear message. And ever since then, that really has kind of shaped how do I deal with fear and push through fear? Cause it's, it's there within all of us. We all have some level of fear about something. And it's just all about learning how do we develop different tools in our toolbox to, you know, go out there and shine as the best version of ourselves. Do you still find yourself having to have that conversation? Because even the the most, uh, like I'm going to say, Carrie Underwood probably still is the harshest critic to Carrie Underwood, right? Because you always think you could be doing better or you could have done this better. You could have done this song a little bit better or you could have performed a little bit better here or hit that high note a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Are you still your harshest critic when it comes to your music, when you go out on stage or when you're about to go on stage and you have to get into that mindset, okay, I need to do the best I need to do and it's going to be a great show. I have a rule after we perform, nobody's allowed to critique anything that they've done wrong for at least an hour after the show. So you have to celebrate the whatever you just did and not go down through that mindset. Oh, I screwed up on this song. Or because a lot of times, you know, you're playing with a band and everyone gets off the stage and they'll be like, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. I did this wrong. Instead of celebrating the, oh, remember that feeling of like how good it felt when we all we're together and you know celebrating the win so that's one of my rules when we get off stage is only celebrate the wins and then I really do believe in constructive criticism so going back in you know looking at the footage if you want or if you film your show and kind of then going through and be like okay well this can improve this can improve why did that happen you know how can we make things better and I think life is always about improving but not feeling bad about the mistakes that you make and for me now I think I'm definitely my, my own worst critic when I, when I give that the power, but when I take the power away from being critical and I focus on, you know, more of the celebration that makes it a lot, a lot easier. So let's, let's talk about the celebrations. You, uh, during, during the pandemic, you have released two new songs about a boy and game on, um, most people found time in the pandemic to write and enjoy themselves and try to get back to the uh, sort of the, the essence of music because no one was performing live shows anymore. There was no audiences. 
um, you have released two new songs during that pandemic. How was that experience compared to releasing your first album com com compared to releasing al uh, music beforehand? Yeah, it was very different, especially in the <laughs> sense that there was no rule book, right? And that nobody knew what to do and nobody knew what the right thing or what the right move was or the right direction to go in. It was all just kind of, you know, let's go with the flow and, and see what happens. And it's really been a huge part of my life is just always kind of, this feels good. Let's go over here. This feels good. Let's do this. As opposed to strategically planning things. And it's funny because I did have a strategic plan and tour and, you know, radio campaign all planned out for um, April, 2020. And obviously that didn't happen. And we had to postpone it and I just kind of sat on it for a while and just thought you know what it's ironic that the one time I planned something it doesn't pan out <laughs> but, but let's go with this and let's you know like see where the flow goes and for the first chunk of of this whole past however a year and a half it was a lot about just kind of pivoting and figuring out a new way of you know getting through the day and and then it just came time where I felt right to release the song and it was a fun, upbeat song. And I felt like I needed something fun to focus on. And, you know, I think the world needed some fun stuff out there. So putting it out was definitely different. Um, it was weird being in the recording studio, re recording new music um, for the last song about a boy, because that one we had not recorded previous to COVID so we had to make a find a way to make that happen and you know everyone's in masks and staying apart and normally the recording experience you know I'm a hugger like woo like yay like let's all celebrate <laughs> and high fives and you know you're all in the room together and it wasn't like that at all it was you know everyone kind of does their parts and everyone's wearing masks and you know the celebration of it was very different than it typically would be but I'm very grateful that I was able to release two songs in such a crazy challenging year and a half and I think just focusing on whatever came of anything was a win for me because you know life was very different and there was no expectations so releasing game on for me was pretty cool because I had no expectations because the rules were completely different nobody knew what to expect and to have so much stride with it internationally was pretty exciting as it happened so there's just a lot to a lot to celebrate all right my phone is buzzing in my on my table and it's bothering me oh, so no i do problem. apologize for that <laughs> i want I, let's talk about about a boy because I, i've listened to this song on repeat since uh your team reached out to possibly should come on the show and you have a new fan i will admit that i've been listening to it almost every other morning just to get a little kick me up where did this song come from because you listen to it, it there is so much heart into the song and so much story into the song that it makes me want to ask is this song about something that happened in your life? Is it life imitating art in some way? So this is actually the first song that I did not write myself. This is the first pitch that I recorded. And I just really connected to it when I heard the song for the first time, because I felt like this is a song that everybody can relate to. Everybody at some point has had someone or something that has affected them in a, in a big way that, you know, it still crosses your mind and, little things remind you of past experiences and we're all human and we all long for connection and love and to be wanted. And I think listening to that song, it just reminds me of this universal feeling of that human emotion drawn to relationships. So just hearing it, it just kind of was a nice reminiscing song. It just kind of was a feel good, empowering song that it's okay to be on your own, but it's also okay to you know, think about memories or want something more and, you know, For go that, on this journey of life. Oh, sorry. Continue on. No, I was just going to say, it's just, you know, the life journey of, of human emotion. In, for when I speak to artists who do record songs that other people have written, it's mm -hmm. hard for them from time to time to uh, connect with the song, but it sounds like in that statement that you just said, you connect it with the song in a more personal level that than say some other songs that you might have been listening to at the time to potentially record. Your when you look at, listen to your catalog of music, they have a sense of that heart that you're talking about that you connect with the song. Do you try to when you write your music 
or potentially record uh, songs that people are pitching to you to do have sort of a story to be able to connect to, to say, hey, I love this song. I love the way this song was written from my, my own perspective, because there is a connection that the audience, when they're listening to it, could potentially say, hey, I feel like I'm that person. I'm that person that she's singing about right now. Yes, I think as the artist being connected to what you're singing is very important. It's taking on a role of an emotion <laughs> and sharing that with people. And I think that's a huge part of whatever songs you choose to you know, write or release is to have that emotional connection to it on some level. I mean, your story doesn't have to be exactly the same, but as you know, whoever wrote it or it can be an exaggeration or a twist on a story that or an emotion that you felt. But the thing with music is when we hear it, we all connect to it in different different ways. I mean, I can play you one song and I can have an experience attached to it. You can have a different emotion. You know, this person can feel different and this person can have another story, right? So I think that's the really cool thing with music. It has to portray an emotion. So as an artist, I think it's important to be able to consume that emotion and, and relive that emotion to be able to put it into a, a good, strong vocal recording. And how, do, how, how is your writing style? What, how do you write a song? Because I, I love asking that question because some the, the artists that I've had on have given me a range of answers on this question because some will say they're humming a tune in the back of their head in the middle of the night while doing dishes or the lyrics will come first and then the, uh, then the actual melody will come second. For you, how is it to write, sit down and write a song or is it just sitting down or is it while you're doing day-to-day -day tasks? different all the time. I would say I experience all of the above because I don't know, like I said, I'm not really a strategic planner. I'm more of a kind of go with the, uh, go with what it's feeling. So sometimes I'm, you know, writing music out on a walk. Sometimes it's a guitar riff that I played, or sometimes it's a little piano thing. Um, I always try to record little pieces of what I, melodies or kind of words that I have and so in my voice memos, I've got all sorts of ideas. And when I sit down to do a songwriting session with some people, like Zoom writes have been super popular over the past, you know, COVID time. So coming to the table with a bunch of different people and, you know, you need to have a common idea. So I find in those situations, everyone will kind of share what's going on in their life or, you know, here's my stack of, of different song ideas that I have. And we always try to connect with or pick a song that we all connect with. So that's, that's really important to me when I'm writing um, with whoever. I love to make sure that we're both have experienced that feeling and that both have kind of ridden that wave is, is um, an important part of it. Now you have released uh, about a boy and it has been getting some airplay around the world. And I, I, I watched the music video. I will link it in the show notes to the listeners and to the viewers. So if you haven't already, please click on the link because it's an awesome story. It's an awesome song. And the melody is something that you'll be humming to yourself for a while because I found myself humming to my partner at the time. And he kept on saying to me, stop humming that song because I'm going to start humming it as well. So I would highly <laughs> recommend anyone uh, reach out and look at it. But what's next? Because artists are always about what's next. It's always great to talk about what's now, but what's next before we jump into the next segment of the show? Yeah, so lots of lots of things. Um, I have a new EP coming out next year. So that we just got the masters all done for that, which I'm super stoked for. And yeah, so we're just planning on the next release, which looks like it'll come out in the fall and then um, EP out early next year. So we've got a few things down the hopper to look forward to videos and new tunes and new branding and all the fun stuff. Now, uh, for those who are listening, as this is coming out in the second last week of October, and we are recording this in August, actually, literally the day the women's soccer team won the Olympic That's gold medal. <laughs> Yay. That's we're both right. Classed. This is an exciting, exciting day. Uh, so please, once that uh, new uh, song drops in the fall, I will be linking to that as well. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. I want to turn now to your other, being a musician is hard enough by itself, but you seem to have be, like I said at the beginning of the episode, a jack of all trades, a jackass of all trades. You have many other hats that you wear on a regular basis. And I wanna talk about the business venture that you started during this uh, global pandemic. Not that writing and 
uh, recording music wasn't hard enough, but you started a business. Well, t- tell me about your new business. Yeah, so it's called Simply Socials Management. We're a digital marketing agency offering services in graphic design, web design, content writing, copywriting, um, single artwork if you're in need of that. Um, we do uh, press releases, all the all the things that you would need for a digital marketing campaign in any form of business, we offer those services. So we have a great team of people that have their niche areas of focus. And yeah, so we're able to offer services to artists, to TV and film, to small businesses, to large corporations, really just depends on, you know, what the people need. We have got, uh, we've got something for you here. Where did this idea come from? Because uh, usually uh, someone will start a business because they seem feel like there's a uh, void in the marketplace. Was that for you or was it more what for you to start this business? A, a few different things. Digital marketing, marketing in general has always been a huge passion of mine ever since I can remember. I've always been an entrepreneur. I mean, when I was seven years old, I was making cards and trying to sell them at my dad's work. <laughs> I was just always had an idea and always wanting to put it out there into the world. So um, starting businesses is not something that's foreign to me. I love, I love doing that and uh, launching things off the ground. Digital marketing right now is something that's so important. It's also something that I do and have been doing every day since I started doing music. So it's not something that's unfamiliar and it's a very huge passion of mine. And the team of people that I had working with me on my Crystal McGrath brand and brought them all on board the Simply Socials team so that we can kind of expand what we're doing. And yeah, it just was, it seemed like a perfect fit. It was during a time where, okay, cool. Everything is going online right now and more and more businesses and artists are gonna need to have stronger digital marketing campaigns to sell their services, to sell their products and business. And it's just basically the new um, business card, social media. And so we, we're here to create you a strong social campaign and whatever else, whatever else is needed. So you, you talk about you're willing to work with artists, uh, large corporations, small corporations, businesses, mom, pa shops. Um, how can they get in contact with you? Because people who are in, who are looking for that potential next step to grow their business are looking at digital marketing as one of the biggest neck, uh, biggest, uh, uh, aspects of that marketing campaign is to do it digitally because like you said COVID-19 has taught us one thing digital 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 all the time right now so how can people reach out because I think people would want to know that hey this is a great person I want to back her but I also want to potentially talk about growing my business as well yeah so simplysocialsmanagement.com is our website you can check all the things out there. You can also find us on all the social platforms as well under Simply Socials Management. So just shoot us a message and, and someone from the team or myself will get back to you. And for my listeners and to my audience, uh, to my listeners and my viewers, the links to those will be in the show notes as well. So please check those out. The last area I want to talk about before we turn back to the music and we wrap up here is your podcast. Uh, I, I want to make sure Crushing Chaos, sorry. Uh, It seems like a fun topic to talk about. It seems like a very unique uh, podcast that you've got going. I've listened to a few episodes. How did this idea come about? Because my show, like I said, I like having conversations with people and I thought other people would want to listen to them and they seem to want to listen to them. Where did Crushing Chaos come from? Initially, this podcast started out is just me talking about different things in my life and kind of tools and tricks that I picked up along the way to to use to get through the chaos of my life and just doing so many things all the time. I've learned and developed different skill sets to, to run different businesses and to, you know, still keep my self together in some aspect. (laughs) So I just wanted to share that, uh, those different stories of the struggles and the wins and, you know, just become a relatable person to all the people that, you know, follow my music and just my, my brand in general Uh, During COVID, I was really lacking connection to humans. So I decided to turn the show into more of an interview process. And I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I put out the word and I had hundreds of women from all over the world responding to be on the show, which was just blew my mind how many people just wanted to share their story and, and had a story to share. It was just so cool to be able to chat with. I think we did 45 episodes of that one. And just talked with some amazing women with some amazing stories of overcoming struggle and 
the tools that they use to overcome struggle. And I think there's so many different, different episodes talking about different stories that there's definitely an episode out there for, for everybody, because, you know, we all go through hard times and struggle. And I think especially this past year, so to listen to just different tools and ways to move through, move through the fear and move through the chaos of life is just really helpful to, to relate and to know that other people are experiencing the same thing. I, I, I love that you said it was a way to connect with people because you mm-hmm. want to be able to, with COVID-19, we've all sort of had to stay isolated and stay by ourselves and sort of quarantine ourselves as much as we don't want to into our own personal bubbles. But your show, when you listen to it, you 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 come off as someone who enjoys talking to people on a more intimate level and you seem to be able to get to the, the, the issue as quick as possible. Where does that come from? Because you listen to your show and you, you think to yourself, wow, this person feels like she went to seven years of psychiatry school and she has all the answers. And you, while you might not have, and you might, you might have, I don't know if you went to school for psychiatry, but you <laughs> seem to be able to get people to open up in a way that not a lot of people can. How have you been able to do that? Well, I am also a nutritional health coach and I am huge into energy healing and, you know, coaching people through their lives. So through my platform, it's called live with love movement. I do, you know, energy healing, sample healing, coaching, nutritional coaching, life coaching, all the good things. Um, and I was just drawn to doing that because I'm just seem to have always been able to get to the, get to the good stuff, the heart stuff quickly. And I'm, I'm all about authenticity and I'm all about, you know, let's share our truth, not let's share our shiny images on the outside. And when we start to connect to that authentic truth, we grow as people and we don't grow just talking about superficial items on our day to day. We grow when we talk about the struggle, we grow when we talk about the wins and when we celebrate together and when we support each other through the challenging times. And for me, that's just really important just as a person to connect with people on that level. So it's just that I guess comes naturally to me, so I, my Romanian gypsy ways. <laughs> so the follow-up question to that for any journalist who would be yelling at me if I didn't ask this question, how have you grown in the last 18 months during this pandemic? How, how have you grown to be a better person, to be the person that you are today? I am constantly growing as I think we all are. For me, this time is really about going inside and looking at that internal light instead of looking at all the external opinions and judgments and thoughts. I think that was something that we get caught up in so much when we're constantly on the go is what are they thinking? What do they want to hear? What do I need to put out? What does everybody else want? And then you get caught in doing not you, you're doing everybody else instead of doing the things that really light you up. And for me, this past year and a half, I honestly feel has been as much as this been a huge struggle. It feels like it's been one of my most successful years I've ever had. I've grown so much as an individual being safe to step into my own shoes and feel safe stepping into my power and listening to my own thoughts and values, as opposed to maybe allowing other opinions or ways of being to impose on my own beliefs or thoughts or values and and I think just having that time away and being at home and you know having this safe bubble space to to allow myself to step into my power has been a massive win for me and I can see it it shows up in my work it shows up in my relationships it shows up just how I my relationship with myself on the day-to-day and I think that's a really important lesson that we need to move forward with is tuning out the external and really tuning into the to the internal and it's something I preach all the time however having an extended period to really dive into doing that work has been really great that's awesome Uh, I I I love the word authenticity because there's not a lot of people out there who have it and it seems to be lacking in our society so when people talk about it in the way that you just did so authentic to talk about it 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 makes me happy that i have people like you on the show Uh, i want to i want to i want to jump back into your music for one last second before we like wrap up because every musician wants to tour every musician wants to play in front of a large an audience 
Are you looking at potentially touring at the end of 2021 or are you looking at 2022 because the pandemic is still an unknown? How, how is the planning? Because I know last time you planned the world got shut down. So are you planning now or no? In regards to touring, I'm not really sure what that looks like at this point. I think I'm just kind of taking it day by day, more focusing on the release aspect of songs and kind of the marketing plan behind the behind the song as opposed to being on the road. It will be interesting. I would love to go to Australia. I cannot wait to go over there. So that's probably going to be my first, well, probably Nashville and then Australia will be my, my next two tour hops. Awesome. Whenever it is safe to do so. <laughs> um, Crystal, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been a pleasure. Um, I, I have one last question for you before we wrap up. How can people find you? How can people search for your music? Because we talked about your podcast. We talked about your business, but we didn't talk about where they can find your music. Where can they find your music? <laughs> Crystal McGrath. Just Google that and you'll find it everywhere. <laughs> so I'm on all the social platforms all the streaming platforms you can go to my website crystalmcgrath.ca and find all things about me awesome crystal thank you so much for doing this uh like i said to my viewers and to my listeners the links that we mentioned in the show will be in the show notes please go check her out please follow her please subscribe to her music please follow her business follow her podcast i feel like i've been missing a few other follows but follow 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 because she, like i said she's an authentic person that you really want to make sure you get behind because I, I have become a fan by just listening to one song. So I can't wait for the new EP to come out. I can't wait for the new song to come out this fall. So thank you, Crystal, once again for doing this. Oh, thank you so much and happy fall. <laughs>